When Coda's mom said he was getting a little brother. Hey, Coda, how do you feel about a little brother? He was like, um, no. Maybe if he just stuck his head in the couch, his mom would forget all about. Nope, that didn't work. Coda, meet your new little brother, Yogi. Coda was not happy. He didn't want to be an older brother. It meant he'd have to share his home and mom with someone else. Yogi knew Koda didn't like him. So he tried to change Koda's mind. He even got him a present. Good boy! Koda, look what Yogi gave you. Who doesn't like presents? But then something happened. Koda got sick. Everything's going to be okay. Okay, Kotsi? The vet said Koda couldn't use his back legs anymore and would need wheels to move around. It was hard for Koda. The world seemed a little too big now. But he'd forgotten something. He had a little brother who wasn't going to let his big brother give up. And one day, Yogi tried something. He picked up Koda's leash and started tugging him. Koda wasn't sure at first. But then... Come on, boys! Good boys! Good boys! Good boys! Come on! Bring Koda! Good boys! Koda couldn't believe it. He was moving. All thanks to his little brother. Bring him over here. Bring Koda over here. Koda finally realized how much Yogi loved him and felt bad for the way he acted before. But it didn't matter now, because Koda and Yogi were brothers. And now, best friends. Come on, boys. Good boys. Good boys. What did you do? What did you do? And a funny thing happened. Little Yogi started acting like a big brother. He'd watch over Koda when he needed rest and play gently so he wouldn't get hurt. Good boy! Good boy let Koda have the toy. Before, the idea of having a little brother made Koda want to hide. But now, Koda couldn't imagine life without Yogi. They're brothers, friends, a family, where no one gets left behind. Good boys. What did you do? What did you and Koda do? This is Kevin. He's on his way to see his best friend. Captain! They're such good friends, they can basically read each other's minds. Hey, Cap, you thinking what I'm thinking? You bet I am. Golf cart adventure time! They're the kind of friends who never miss a chance to wear matching costumes. Or just sit on the porch thinking about stuff. Hey Cap, what if Earth is like one big tennis ball being thrown through space? Whoa Kev, that's deep. Captain and Kevin wish they could spend every second together. But they can't. They live in different homes and have different families. But even when they aren't in the same place, they've figured out a way to be close. That's right, Kevin and Captain know how to video chat. Hey Kev, what's up? Oof, not much, just chillin'. Hey Kev, do I have something in my teeth? I don't think so. Do I have something in my teeth? Check out my new haircut. <laughs> Whoa, Cap, you're looking buff. 
Thanks, Kev. If you believe, you can achieve. Talking on the phone is fun, but nothing beats being together for real. Captain! Kev, I missed you so much! Me too! Especially when they get to have sleepovers. They like to kick things off with some backyard wrestling. <laughs> followed by quick water breaks. Then more wrestling, more water. Wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water. Guys, slow down. What's up next? A cruise around town, say hi to the neighbors, grab a treat. Excuse us, can we get two milk bone shakes to go, please? Ooh, uh, can you make mine with extra bones? Head home for a best friend dinner. Ooh, fancy. Gobble down some popcorn. And last but not least, tuck in for a nice bedtime story. There's only one thing about their sleepovers that isn't fun when they have to say goodbye. Bye, Kevin. Oh, Captain! Captain. Kevin and Captain have a friendship that runs deep. It shows us life's better when you can share it with a best friend. And even if you can't always be right next to them, they're always in your heart. Or on the phone. That works too. This is the face Bo's mom sees when she wakes up each morning. This grumpy face. It's like Bo, what's going on? Are you mad? Nope, that's just how Bo looks all the time. When mom gets home, when he gets a hundred hugs, it's how Bo looks, whether he's happy or not. But when Bo's mom brought home Aiden the Dalmatian, <laughs> Bo was definitely not happy. Seriously. He was like, Mom, what is that? Aiden was a little nervous about having a cat brother, and it didn't help when that brother looked like this. Bo kept making a grumpy face but actually kind of seemed to like Aiden. Until Aiden tried to play. Then Bo got real grumpy again. No. He's a cat, he doesn't play. Yes, that's correct. He's actually mad, Aiden. Careful. But was that gonna stop Aiden? N O. No way. Get your mouth off my head. But I love you. Aiden wasn't a dog who gave up easily. Or maybe he just didn't know how to give up. It was like he was going to do whatever it took to get Bo to like him. Aiden, Aiden, get off. Aiden. Oh my God. But it didn't work. Bo got grumpier and grumpier. He wanted to be left alone, but he couldn't hide from Aiden anywhere. He had no choice. He'd have to live on tables from now on. Don't tell him I'm up here. But sooner or later, <laughs> Aiden found him. You have to love me. No, I don't do that. You have to! Never! And 
then one day, something kind of funny happened. Bo and Aiden's mom walked into the bedroom and saw them together. We don't know when it happened or how it happened, but they both started to just like each other. Or Bo probably likes Aiden. Again, it's really hard to tell with Bo. But seeing as how they spend every single second together, it's a pretty good guess that Bo does love Aiden. Most of the time. And that's more than enough for Aiden. Though he'd probably like it if Bo played a little. Come on. I'll think about it tomorrow. <gasps> Who's that? Gotta be someone exciting. It's a pig? There's going to be scratches, leaf sniffing, guitar strumming, and... Psst, wake up, Carlton. Cola has a lot of energy. And Carlton's pretty chill. But when they're together, it's basically the best hangout ever. Before Colt and Carlton met, Carlton was a little pig who needed a family. So his mom adopted him and brought him home. He loved helping his mom take care of other animals. But he also got into a lot of trouble. And he seemed kind of lonely. His mom didn't know what to do to keep him happy. She tried giving him treats, dancing, exercise, and introducing him to new friends. But they weren't the best at sharing. He still seemed pretty lonely sometimes. Then she heard about Colt. Colt was a wild dog, always ready for the next adventure. But although he had a lot of energy, he had no one to play with. And he was kind of lonely, too. So their moms thought maybe they could be each other's friends. But they weren't sure if a pig and a dog would get along. What if they didn't like each other? At first, they only let them meet through the door. Everyone waited to see what would they do. And then this happened. Right away, Colt and Carlton wanted to hang out. It's like they couldn't wait to start being best friends. Now, when it's time to go to Colt's house, Carlton just knows. That oink means, hurry up, Mom. Then it's off they go. Every time Carlton comes over, Colt loses his mind. Sometimes Carlton comes to the front door. Sometimes he comes to the back door. And sometimes he comes in wearing carrot pajamas. But he always wags his tail, like, hi! It doesn't matter that one's a dog and one's a pig in a blanket. They just love each other. No matter who gets scratched first, or gets the squishiest part of the bed, or who gets to walk who, as long as they both get bandanas, all they know is that they can't wait to see each other. Again! And again! And again! Because best friends are worth getting excited for. Very, very excited. This is Cooper the dog. And this is... Hang on. So tiny. Look at those little paws. Look at that little nose. Trying to get it together here. All right, let's do this again. This is Cooper the dog. And this teeny tiny little cat is Minnie the kitten. And they are... Best 
animal friends. Cooper used to be the only pet in his family. But he got pretty lonely with no one else to play with. His mom thought he needed a friend. So one day she came home with a mysterious black bag. When Cooper saw the bag, he didn't know what to think. First, he stared at it. Then, he sniffed it. And then he started to wag his tail because he knew something special was about to happen. And he was right, because Minnie was in the bag. Cooper's like, you're the tiniest thing I've ever seen. Do you want to be my friend? And Minnie was like, boop, boop. And Cooper was like, slurp, slurp. And that was it. They were best friends forever. At first, Minnie was a little shy because her new best friend was so big. Hey buddy, give me some space. But soon she realized all the things she could do with a best friend who was a giant. Like, have you ever napped on your friend? So cozy. And because Cooper was so big, Minnie could ride on top of him like a horse. And pretty soon, Minnie forgot that she was tiny and Cooper was big. In fact, she started to think she was the big one. I am a giant kitty! A big, brave, giant kitty. Take that, you tiny dog! But Cooper doesn't mind. He's just happy when Minnie's around. Because these two best friends know it doesn't matter who's big or small. It matters who you are. And these guys are two peas in a pod. Well, one giant doggy pea and one very tiny kitten pea. In other words, best animal friends. Duck might be the happiest cat in the world. That's right, you heard me. This cat's name is Duck. But she's never once quacked, as far as I know. She's a pretty normal cat. Duck also has a special way of getting around. She doesn't have front legs, so she runs like a dinosaur. Pretty fast, actually. Very fast. But she's not a dinosaur. And she's not a duck. She's just the world's happiest cat. But what is it exactly that makes her such a happy cat? Hmm, so glad you asked. Duck has a very special best friend. Nope, it's not a duck. Duck the cat is best friends with a dog named Bimini. They spend every second wrestling, taking naps together, sitting on each other. You know, best friend stuff. They're a perfect pair, but they weren't always this lucky. Because before they became best friends, Duck and Bimini both felt alone. Duck was only a kitten when her dad adopted her, and she had just lost her front legs so she was still getting used to walking on only two. Not so easy for a kitten. It took a lot of work and a lot of waddling, but Duck was unstoppable. You're no match for me, small string thing. I am Duck. I am a wild tiger, a jungle leopard. I am Duck. This bag cannot defeat me. 
You know why? Because I am dumb! <laughs> Duck was starting to feel pretty happy. But she wasn't the happiest cat in the world just yet. That's because she was still missing one thing. Duck had a pretty big family. Like a, um, big family. All kind of too big to play with such a tiny kitten. I mean, look at these giants. How was she supposed to wrestle and squish any of these big pups? But lucky for Duck, there was someone in the family who was the perfect size. Nope, it is not a duck. I promise the only duck in this story is a cat. It was Bimini. Bimini had always been the smallest pup in the house, so she would felt a little left out. Until Duck arrived. Now Bimini is a happy dog, and Duck is the world's happiest cat. Just look at these two. A tiny pup and an even tinier cat whose name is Duck. Wait, did she just quack? This is the happiest family of cats. Big sister Nellie, brother Gilbert, and Nala, the little kitten. They really, really like each other. But it wasn't always that way. Nellie used to hate Nala. But now everybody squeezes into the same sink together. Just like you'd expect from best animal friends. It all started one day when Gilbert was out taking a walk. Most of the time, Gilbert tra-la-las happily next to his dad. But on this particular day, Gilbert saw a little lost kitten in the bushes. Gilbert wouldn't move. He had to be sure the little kitten was all right. They waited and waited, but the kitten's mom never showed up. So Gilbert had to put his paw down. There was no way he was leaving this little kitten behind. They had to take her home. So that's what they did. Gilbert and his dad decided to call the sweet little kitten Nala. And soon, they found out Nala loved getting her chin rubbed. Gilbert was the best big brother. He made Nala feel right at home. It was almost perfect, except Nellie. Big sister Nellie wasn't at all sure about the new kitten. Poor Nala, she just wanted to be part of the family. But Nellie was a tough cat, and not the kind to make new friends fast. Maybe she wasn't the kind to make new friends at all. Nellie was like, why is this strange kitten in my house? She just stared and stared at little Nala. What are you looking at? Can't you just like me? Luckily, Gilbert was there to show his new sister how much their family loved her. Nala started to follow Gilbert everywhere. At dinner time, it was Nala and Gilbert and someone always watching. And watching. But what Nellie didn't know about Nala was that she loves to play and never gives up. Nala was going to be friends with Nellie somehow. She just knew it. And then one day, it finally happened. Nala was batting around her favorite toy, and Nellie looked like she actually wanted to play. Nala couldn't believe it. And after a few sniffs, Nellie was like, yeah, okay, I like you. Now, they totally love each other. And Gilbert's like, I knew this would work. We cats are made for each other. These days, Nellie, Gilbert, and little Nala do everything together. They are three peas in a, hmm, that's not a pod, still a sink. They're so grateful to have found each other, so happy to be a family, and best animal friends.
the first time Bixby the Beaver met Harry the Otter. What do you think, Big? It didn't go great. They were actually pretty scared of each other. In the wild, otters and beavers meet all the time. But Bixby and Harry both live in an animal sanctuary. Harry just arrived. This is your new home. But Bixby's been here for a while. Hi. When Bixby was just a baby beaver, his den was destroyed by accident. Some people found Bixby all alone and brought him to the sanctuary. From that moment on, Bixby loved humans. He's keeping up. He'd make little beaver noises until they gave him treats. At the sanctuary, Bixby had a brand new den to call his own. That no one else was allowed in, thank you very much. And a whole pond, all to himself. Well, he had to share with these turtles, but they didn't really say much. He got tons of attention from his humans and life was good. There was just one little problem. Bixby was alone, with only turtles to keep him company. But then, Harry arrived. Harry needed a little more help than Bixby. His arms and legs didn't grow how they were supposed to, so he couldn't walk or run or swim. Harry could only roll and roll. The people at the sanctuary helped his arms get stronger, but they knew the best thing for Harry would be a friend who could encourage him. Could Bixby be that friend? Well, not at first. Bixby probably thought that Harry was just a very strange beaver. And Harry probably thought that Bixby was a really odd otter. They didn't think they had anything in common. Bixby went back to his den, where no one else is allowed, thank you very much. And Harry tried to make friends with the turtles, but they don't really say much. Harry and Bixby were still alone and were feeling lonely too. Until one day, they saw each other in the pond and realized they actually did have something in common. But that wasn't all. They both love begging for snacks. Oh, are you climbing up my leg like Bixby now? And chowing down in the sun and messing with the pool skimmer. Harry showed Bixby his very best roles. And Bixby showed Harry how to build a dam. The more time they spent together, the better Harry felt. Soon, he could even run. Anything to keep up with his new best bud. They started to feel like more than just roommates. They felt like brothers. And then the best thing happened. Bixby started letting Harry join him in his den. Turns out there was someone else who was allowed in. Bixby's best animal friend, the turtles. Just kidding, it's Harry, of course. They just can't stop hugging. Henry and Kiki may look exactly alike, but that's not why they're best friends. It's because they have a lot in common. Before Henry met Kiki, before they were wearing matching tracksuits and wagging their tails in exactly the same way, Henry was an only dog who just lived with his mom. 
but something wasn't right. He'd make these noises and give his mom looks like he was trying to tell her something. His mom thought maybe he was asking for a friend. So she adopted Kiki and brought her home. Kiki was a foster dog who lived with different families and moved around a lot. She was kind of shy and nervous. Kiki wanted a forever home more than anything. The day her new mom came to get her, Kiki was wondering, would she have to move again? Or would this be her home forever? She was super nervous. But on the car ride to her new home, everything changed. Because Henry was there. He was so excited to have a new friend, he showed Kiki all the fun things they could do in a car. They could feel the wind in their ears, say hello to dogs on the street, take an extra cozy nap, and explore the world. Henry made Kiki feel so good, she stopped feeling nervous. She had a feeling she was going to her forever home, and that Henry was her forever friend. Since then, Henry and Kiki haven't left each other's sides. They even have a daily routine that they have to do together. They kick it off with some good morning kisses. Then they race each other around the block. It's usually a tie. They dig for treasure, say hi to the neighbors, get a big hug from mom, find the comfiest spot to nap in, and go for more car rides. They've never even had an argument. They don't even fight about where to sit in the car. Kiki has the window seat because she likes to look outside. And Henry sits close to mom because he likes to watch her drive. Once in a while, Henry also likes the window seat. But they don't even fight about that. Kiki thinks of it as a chance to lick Henry's armpits. No matter what Henry and Kiki are doing, you'll probably find them together. They're inseparable and adorable and best animal friends. Cole and Marmalade are totally normal cats who do totally normal cat things. They play together, take naps together, defend their house against alien robots together. Wait, what? Cole's like, quick, Marmalade, you have to go and warn the mayor. Any day now would be nice. and check out their super awesome hideout. To the cat cave! It looks like Marmalade and Cole are anything but normal cats. They're more like superheroes. And best animal friends. When Cole first met Marmalade, he knew right away that the little kitten had what it took to join his superhero team. Marmalade was curious, brave, great at hiding, and most importantly, good at making humans think he was just a normal, cute little kitten. The perfect secret identity for any superhero cat. Cole was like, stick with me, kid. I'll teach you everything I know. Cole entered superhero life early on when he scared away the masked mayhem of Pet City. And defended his home against the lizard attack of 2012. Stay away, lizard monster. Cole always wanted a partner by his side. And so, the superhero training began. Rapid reflex training. Strength training. 
Surprise attack training. Crazy weasel on a ball training. Box training. And even see in the dark training. Day by day, Cole watched as Marmalade grew bigger and stronger. He was so proud. Now, there's no mission too big or villain too mean for Cole and Marmalade to handle. They were ready to take on anything. Like swarms of balls, sassy squirrels, annoying ribbons, money-stealing robo-cats, hungry sharks, giant teddy bears, evil toilet paper, mischievous mice, virtual mice, and even bubbles. Okay, come on, that just looks fun. Marmalade had not only become Cole's superhero partner, but also his friend. That's why Cole and Marmalade always make sure to take a break to hang out and do normal best friend cat stuff. And of course, they hang out with their best human friend too. He's awesome at making them cool box forts. And he always gives Cole and Marmalade plenty of things to play with. They love him a lot. Cole and Marmalade are some of the best cat superheroes in the world. But most importantly, they're also best animal friends. Wendy might be the tiniest kitten in the whole world. At least she looks that way next to her favorite dog, George. She's about the size of one of his paws. But she's not scared. She loves sleeping on her favorite big furry dog, who makes her feel safe. And George, he loves being her pillow. When Wendy was a baby kitten, a very special person spotted her. And Wendy walked right up to say hi. Hello, who are you? Okay, well, you're coming home with us. Wendy's new mom brought her home to George. Wendy's like, is that a dog or a tractor? Her mom was worried she'd be afraid, but she went right up to him. At first, George wasn't really sure what to make of her. Who's this tiny little thing? But when Wendy stuck her head into his fur, that was it. George loved Wendy after that. Before Wendy arrived, George was feeling a little down. His mom wasn't exactly sure why. There were other animals in the house, and George liked them. But something was the matter. I guess he had a kitten-sized hole in his heart. Because when Wendy showed up and started cuddling, and meowing every time she saw him, and sleeping under his face. George got so happy. It was like he'd been waiting his whole life for Wendy. He wanted to be her best friend forever. They probably like each other because they're so different. Wendy has a huge personality. She always messes with his tail, even when he's asleep. 
and George is a gentle giant. Wendy will drag her tail all over his face, but he just sits there and looks at her. Wendy and George don't notice that they're different sizes. All they know is that happiness is a tiny kitten under your paw and a tail wrapped around your head. That's how you can tell your best animal friends. A beagle and a bunny in a blanket! Yes, please! These two might look different, but inside, they're pretty much the same. They both love walks, naps, wearing costumes, and the drive-thru. Okay, these two look like they're having too much fun. Can we come? I'll take that as a yes. When Chloe the Beagle first met Rue the Bunny, she was so excited. She really wanted Rue to chase her. I mean, that's kind of what dogs do when they want to be friends. But Rue was like, nah, chasing's not my thing. So Chloe came up with a different idea she'd bring Rue a chew toy. And another chew toy. Okay, so all the chew toys. It was really nice of Chloe, but Rue was still like, listen, I'm a bunny, and that is a dog chew toy. But did that stop Chloe from becoming best friends with a bunny? Nope. Chloe just stuck around. And sniff by sniff, Rue started to like her beagle buddy. Then one day, Chloe and Rue looked out the window. Something was happening. There were little white flakes falling from the sky. And Chloe was like, we gotta check this out. So what did they do? They went outside to play in the snow. And it was magic. They ran around in it and tasted it. Mmm, yum. They even built a snowman out of it. Uh, is that, is that a guinea pig? Yes. Yes, it is. After that, they did everything together, like vacationing at the lake, wearing matching sweatshirts, and sitting on their mom's lap, which is kind of hard to do at the same time. One lap, two fuzzy butts. They even go for rides in the car together and get treats at the drive-thru. One puppuccino with extra foam, please. Oh, and a carrot for my friend here. Thank you. The only thing they won't do together is share food or water. Why? Because, well, Chloe's breath is a little too stinky. Woo! No, thank you. Rue does let Chloe use her as a pillow, though. The world's softest pillow. The thing is, just because you're different or one of you has stinky breath doesn't mean you can't be friends. In fact, it feels really good to have a friend who's not exactly like you. It may take a little longer to play in the snow, but once you do, you're pretty much friends for life. That's Chloe and Rue for you. Best friends from sunup to sundown. Good night, Chloe. Good night, Rue.
You know what you don't see a lot of? A duck being walked on a leash. Ah. I mean, walking a dog, sure. Ah. But have you ever walked a dog and a duck? Ah. Well, that's what you get with this family. Because this dog and duck duo never spend a day apart. And that's what makes them best animal friends. It all started when Elway was adopted into a big family. Whoa, that is a lot of brothers and sisters. Elway was the perfect fit for this family of canines. I guess you could say he fit the bill. After a while, he started thinking he was a dog. He would just do what his brothers and sisters did. What's this, dinner time? Don't mind if I do. He even gets his own dog bed. In this house, Elway's just part of the gang. Snuggle time. And while everybody in the family loved Elway, one in particular took to him like a duck to water. And it just so happened to be the smallest family member too. A three pound chihuahua named Stout. Adorable. They go on walks together, play with toys together, chase each other, and of course, they dog duck snuggle. Stout is the littlest puppy in the pack. He's only seven months old. So he's known Elway his whole life. And the two of them also have something in common. In a family of big dogs, they're both different. Stout is little, and Elway, well, he's a duck. And that gives them a special bond. Hey, come back here, I can't fly. And even if they sometimes disagree, or dog duck wrestle, it's no biggie. Because at the end of the day, that's what makes family family. And our differences are what make the pack strong. So whether you're the littlest pup of the group or the duck, do your thing. Because if it's family, the others will love you no matter what. Just like Elway the duck and Stout the chihuahua. Best Animal Friends. This is Ponzu. Ponzu knows he's pretty stylish. He's got a bow tie, and a beret, and a whatever that is. But the coolest thing that's ever happened to him was when his mom brought home a parrot. A really cute parrot named Mango. Their mom wasn't sure if they'd like each other. But then this happened. This is how birds say, I love you. Now, these two are pretty much attached at the hip. Or should I say, the shoulder. Because Mango's always hopping up onto Ponzu's back and going for a ride. Their days are just packed. From the time they wake up to when they go to bed. Every day for these two buds starts like this. After they wake up, they go for a walk. 
in their own special stroller. When they get home, they eat breakfast together with their mom. Then they help out at their mom's restaurant. After work, it's time for an adventure. I wonder where they're going. On a boat? Okay, Mom, we're pooped. It's time to skedaddle. When they get home, they nap and cuddle. After that, it's back outside to play in the park. Mango's like, hey, Ponzu, check for squirrels. And Ponzu's like, all clear. Then it's dinner time. They enjoy a corn on the cob. Finally, it's bedtime. Good night, you two. Ponzu is Mango's big pillow, and Mango is Ponzu's little pillow. They can't even remember a time when they weren't best friends. Mango's the wild and crazy one, obviously. And Ponzu is cool as a cucumber. They kind of help each other stay balanced. Because that's what best friends do. Not because they have to. Or they need to. But just because they want to. Ponzu might have a lot of cool outfits. But the one with Mango on his shoulder is definitely his favorite. So what's it really like to be in a puppy pack? Just ask Nira, Fred, and Willow. And their puppy pack leader? A cat! This is TK. She's the tiny boss of these big dogs. They love her. Why wouldn't they? She's sweet, so weird, and she always knows what to do next. They're lucky she's the head of their pack. And oh yeah, best animal friends. One day, Nira's mom was driving down the street when she saw the tiniest kitten alone on the side of the road. It was TK and she needed help. So Nira's mom did something special. She scooped her up, took her home, and introduced her to the dogs. TK stands for Tiny Kitten, and TK was a very tiny kitten. Her new mom was worried the dogs would step on her. But TK wasn't worried. She didn't even know she was small. She'd like paw at her gigantic dog brothers and sisters. And nobody ever stepped on her. Nira is a grumpy dog. <laughs> but she fell in love with TK, like right away. And so did Willow and Fred. They really liked it when TK warmed them up with her fur. And they didn't even mind when TK would sometimes get a little wild. TK was here to stay. But now that the family was bigger, someone had to step up and lead the pack. At first, Grumpy Nira wanted the job, but it didn't really work out. So TK took over. She keeps them all right on their paws. Family time on the couch. And TK in her own special chair. Sometimes she can be a bit much. But most of the time, the dogs are happy to have a tiny cat as their leader, especially Willow. Willow was adopted just before TK, so they're both kind of new to the family. Willow is so gentle and also kind of nervous. But TK looked out for her. 
and now they have a special friendship. Fred, on the other hand, just likes to go with the flow. So he was pretty chill about TK joining the family. But that's the cool thing about being in a puppy pack. Each member of the pack brings something different to the couch. It doesn't matter if you're a grumpy dog or a fearless cat, if you're the shy new kid, a leader, a follower, or a bold curtain climber. What matters is that everyone loves each other and that the pack sticks together to each other and to one super special cat. So yeah, leading a puppy pack is a lot of work, especially when you're a tiny kitten. But she wouldn't trade these dogs for anything. How could she? After all, they're her best animal friends. Meet Jax and Chewy. Want to know a secret about these two German Shepherds? It's pretty special. They just became mom and dad, but not to puppies. They're the parents of a bouncing bunch of baby chicks. It's true. Jax, Chewy, and these baby chicks are the sweetest family. And oh yeah, best animal friends. When these baby chicks hatched in Jax and Chewy's backyard, Jax and Chewy were so excited to meet them. But when the fuzzy babies started following them around and chirping in their ears, these pups were like, what? Uh-oh. We have a lot to learn about chickens. Gentle. Gentle. Most importantly, the dogs had to learn to be gentle with the chicks. Well, careful, gentle. Be gentle. Because they kept forgetting how tiny they were. But even though it's unusual for big dogs to have chicken babies, Jax and Chewy were naturals. They'd take the chicks outside, and play their favorite game, run around and make lots of noise. Jax and Chewy were good parents and good dogs. And they loved spending every moment of their lives with their little chicks. But the little chicks didn't stay little for long. Soon, they were big enough to run around the yard by themselves. Hey! Hey, you guys, wait for us! The chicks kept growing and growing and growing. Pretty soon, they weren't little chicks anymore, but huge, full-grown, fluffy chickens. Chewy and Jax were so proud of their chickens who are bold and funny and really smart. And even though the grown-up chickens don't need Jax and Chewy's help anymore, they still spend lots of time with their parents, sharing family dinners, and just hanging together. Because even if you're a big chicken and your parents are dogs, there's nothing better than being with someone you love. Especially when they're your best animal friends. Ella the dog is a boxer, so you'd think she'd like to box but it's Willow the cat who does the boxing. Right in the face. Ella doesn't seem to mind. She's just happy to have a friend who loves pipe cleaners and sleeping and spying on the birds in the backyard. You know, normal best friend stuff. Because these two are definitely best animal friends. 
this little kitten didn't always have a dog best friend. There was a time when Willow didn't have any friends. See, Willow is a little different from most kittens. And she grew up outside, without a home of her own. But Willow was determined to find a family. So one day, she took herself to a doorstep and waited. She was hoping someone would pick her up and love her. And someone did. Her new mom reached down, scooped her up, and took her to the vet. Turned out that Willow was pretty healthy. She just looked a little different from other cats. But you know who doesn't care about that at all? This big monster dog, that's who. When Willow came home, Ella was there to give her exactly what she needed. A best buddy. Because when you have a dog best friend, everything's better. Now you might think a dog who does this and is so big might be kind of scary to a little kitten. But not this kitten. It's like Willow believes she's as big as Ella, especially when she's standing on her back. Willow isn't afraid of Ella at all. She cuddles and wrestles and boxes and bops Ella on the head. It's worth it to have a friend who cleans her ears. Willow and Ella are so close that it's like Willow thinks she's a dog. Or maybe Ella thinks she's a cat, like a big cat. But whatever they are or think they are, Willow and Ella know one thing for sure. A big monster dog can definitely be best buds with a cute little kitten. Even a kitten with a special nose. Ella loves Willow no matter what. That's just how it is when you're best animal friends. When new horses come to this sanctuary, Gypsy Rose! Welcome home, Vegas. They run free for the first time. But sometimes they feel nervous and a little scared, especially around people. So Barkley the dog comes to the rescue. Did you guys meet Barkley yet? He's there to greet them on their first day. How do I get in here? I need to meet these little babies. Barkley's like, welcome home, little horse. You're gonna love it here. Barkley's job is to look after all the horses at the horse sanctuary. And to make sure they're happy so they can have the time of their lives. It's the best dog job in the world. Barkley's always super sweet to the new horses on their first day because some of the horses have had a really hard time. It can take a horse a while to start feeling happy again. But Barkley's really good at cheering them up. He just goes over and is like, I'm gonna be your new best friend, and almost never leaves their side. It always works. Barkley plays with the horses and joins them for meals. And in his own way, he lets them know they're safe and that he loves them. One of Barkley's best, best friends is Petula. Good morning, Petula. Petula came to the sanctuary after getting frostbite and Barkley knew exactly what she needed to feel a little better. Hugs. 
like about a million hugs. Soon after the hugging started, Petula started to feel pretty good. So Barkley hasn't stopped. He hugs her every time he sees her. Just jumps up and puts his arms around her. It's the best. Barkley and Petula have something special. But Barkley's friends with everybody. From Lulu, the lamb who lives at the sanctuary, to his donkey pals, Bert and Ernie, to his mom. Everyone wants to be with Barkley. But Barkley knows his most important job is to be there for the horses. It's his purpose. Now that's a happy dog right there. And they're his number one, top of the charts, all-time favorites. And of course, his best animal friends. Wally loves bedtime. He's... Well, you can't be in this sweetheart. Oh, wait a minute. Well, someone been sitting oh, on you. Oh, Oh, you had a fat wombat sitting on you. Wally. Wally may be a wombat, but he's a classic bed hog. Try to move him, and he pretends to be asleep. Um, Wally? Uh, Wally, I, I need to get in too? And if you don't make enough room for him, you won't get any sleep. But Buggy the kangaroo doesn't mind. He's Wally's best friend and his favorite blanket. Buggy loves his big furry bed hog. Maybe because before they found a pouch to share together, they were both lost. When Wally was just a baby, his rescuers found him by the side of the road and brought him to his new home. He may have been little, but he acted big. He was a little wombat tornado. He couldn't even sit still in his bed. Maybe because the bed was missing something. A small, bouncy, curious kangaroo. Buggy was found by himself too. He was so lovable, he just wanted to hug somebody. So when his rescuers introduced him to Wally, he was obsessed. He was like a wombat magnet. He couldn't stop following Wally around and licking his ears and following him around and eating next to him and following him around. Wally wasn't sure what to think of him. But one day, Wally decided to follow him back and discovered life was actually more fun with this hoppy new friend. Soon they were hanging out every day in front of the fire and sleeping in one big furry pile outside. From then on, you never saw Wally without Buggy. What are you two doing, huh? What are you doing in his bag, Buggy? Huh? At breakfast? Playing tag? Or doing whatever this is? Buggy's lucky to have other animal friends at the sanctuary, too. Like Ernie the Emu. But no one's as special to Wally as Buggy. When Buggy's with Wally, it's just magic. They've got their own little squad. And you know, whenever you see Wally in a bed, somewhere buried underneath is probably a sleepy kangaroo who wouldn't have it any other way.
When the animal rescuers found Agatha and Jukebox living on their own, they took them to a shelter, a place where people help dogs who need it. At the shelter, every dog gets their own space. Except Agatha and Jukebox. Because when they tried giving them separate beds, they got so upset. They did not want to be apart. So the people at the shelter put Agatha and Jukebox in a room together. And that made these pups really happy. Now all they had to do was wait for someone to adopt them. Both of them. But adopting two dogs is a lot of responsibility for one family. Whoever was going to adopt both Agatha and Jukebox had to be really special. Then one day, Agatha and Jukebox met these two. They didn't know it yet, but they were seeing their new family for the first time. I mean, how could you not fall in love with these faces? I mean, come on. But could they really take both home? Well, after some time with the dogs, it was official. And Agatha and Jukebox were the happiest puppies ever. Look at that smile. They said goodbye to the animal rescuers who had helped them and hopped in the car. They were excited to see what their new home would be. And even more excited to be together in a car. They arrived, and they were pumped. Come in. Welcome home. Welcome to your new home. They ran around exploring every part of their new place. Because Agatha and Jukebox had never lived in a house before. This place is huge. Are you kidding me? Is this a drawer full of treats? And when they saw the backyard, they basically lost their doggy minds. There was a perfect spot to sit in the sun, and there was a really special new toy. A hose! Agatha and Jukebox were so happy. So, so very happy. They loved their new home, their new family, and their new life. And yes, they still share a bed. Some things never change. Looks like some of their tricks rubbed off on the fam. Um, excuse me, we're kind of sitting here? There's just no separating best friends in this house. And there's just no stopping Agatha and Jukebox. The pups are so grateful. Who wouldn't be? Not only do they have a new house, a family who loves them, and a lot of new space to snuggle, they get to do it all together. They'll spend the rest of their big dog lives as best animal friends. Wilbur is so confident, really handsome, a good drooler, and Wilbur's two best friends in the world are actual guinea pigs. Named Market Price and Rumpa Dump. One more time, that's Market Price and Rumpa Dump. Wilbur loves these two so much that he basically copies everything they do. In his own special way, Wilbur's part guinea pig. And definitely a guinea pig's best animal friend. Wilbur didn't always live with guinea pigs. So when they first moved in, he thought they were little dogs. And he tried to play with them like they were puppies. But when all they wanted to do was eat lettuce, he realized they were something different. But they were so cute and so fun, 
that Wilbur decided to be their best friend. But that meant eating lettuce. But after a few more tastes, I guess he started to like it. Because now, he doesn't go a single day without eating lettuce next to his favorite guinea pigs in the world. It's what makes Wilbur the happiest. And sometimes they spice it up a bit by trying to eat as fast as they can. It can get a little competitive. This one time, Market Price took a piece of lettuce right out of Wilbur's mouth. Wilbur barked at her after that. And Market Price barked right back. It got pretty crazy. But everybody stayed best friends in the end. When they're not eating lettuce, Wilbur likes to follow the little pigs around, doing whatever they do. But one day, the pigs decided to follow Wilbur outside. It was sort of a big deal for everyone. The guinea pigs had never felt grass before and loved how it tickled their bellies. Wilbur would try to get them to run around, but the pigs were always happy where they were. Wilbur was just glad to teach them one thing, because that is what friends do. They share their favorite parts of life and help you try something new. Nobody told Wilbur what it was gonna be like to have two guinea pigs in his life, but he's so happy with Market Price and Rumpa Dump. His partner's in lettuce eating. And best animal friends. What is this monkey doing on this dog's back? Going for a ride. Every morning, Avni the monkey hops right onto Manu the dog's back. And off they go. They walk everywhere together. Because these two are best animal friends. Avni and Manu love to hang out. Well, Avni does the hanging. Manu does the walking. They eat together. Mmm, my favorite, grass. And sniff the dirt together. Find anything good, Manu? And basically do everything together. But dogs aren't usually best friends with monkeys. So how did these two meet? They met at an animal sanctuary. It's a place where people take care of animals who need help. Avni was very little when she first came to the sanctuary. She needed a family. The people at the sanctuary knew just what to do. They gave her lots of love. And pretty soon, she was part of their giant family. Avni became friends with all the other animals there. Like Billo the cat. She loved her animal friends. But when Avni met Manu, something very special happened. Avni jumped right onto Manu's back. Ooh, can I hang out up here? Manu did not mind at all. And just like that, a friendship was born. A best friendship. Now, these two go on adventures every day. Down jungle roads, through grassy fields, 
and all around the sanctuary, saying hi to everyone they meet. Ah, good day to you. Nice weather we're having. Oh, and good day to you. Even when they're doing nothing at all, they are never apart. But one day, the people at the sanctuary told Avni that she was ready to head back into the wild. She was healthy and strong, and the wild is where monkeys are happiest. So Avni headed out. But pretty soon, she was right back at the sanctuary. She just missed Manu too much. Oh, Manu, what would I do without you? Now, Avni spends some time in the jungle being a wild monkey. But she comes back as much as she can to see her sanctuary family. And to take more rides on the Manu Express. All aboard! You just can't keep best friends apart. And Avni and Manu are definitely best animal friends. These ducks always have a warm place to sleep because they're best friends with a bunch of dogs. They're a huge dog-duck family. And things can get pretty wild. Ducks laying their necks on dogs' heads. Ducks jumping onto dogs' backs. They love being together. even if it sometimes means getting a big beak in their mouth. That's how you know they're best animal friends. Don and Gertie were adopted when they were only two days old. The dogs, Jake and Rose, were so curious about the fluffy little ducks, who were so tiny and also brave. It didn't take long to fall totally in love with the teeny ducks. And the ducks loved them right back. They trusted the gentle dogs with their whole duck hearts. They even stuck their beaks inside the dogs' mouths. Before long, the baby ducks and big dogs were inseparable. They cuddled together when they were cold, put on costumes, and even shared food. Every day, they found somewhere new to explore. Excuse me, that is my watermelon! As they grew up, the ducks started to need their own space. So they moved to the Duck Palace. A whole building just for ducks. And also their dog friends, who come to visit almost every afternoon. One day, they noticed that the house was getting a little more crowded. Hey, who let this baby in here? The ducks and dogs weren't sure what to do with a new human in their pack. They only knew how to hang out with ducks and dogs. But eventually, they figured it out. And snuggled, played in the grass, and put on more costumes and made the baby an honorary duck. Or maybe an honorary dog? It doesn't matter. Because whether you're a tiny duck learning to walk, a big dog watching where you step, or a baby, you know a friend when you see them. And Don, Gertie, Jack, Rose, and now a baby? know for sure their best 
animal friends. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.